$18,000 for our first place, but that's just in addition to the golden ticket, which then gets him into the world championship, which is even more. Navi, over the course of the last 35 wars, has currently four players with a 100% hit rate. At this point, against a team like Navi, you really have to go for perfection. You have to go for a perfect war. Our first attack for surgical is in Isma. Gonna make it his way in, and like you said, overgrowth. Root Riders, Valkyries, and Super Barbarians. Most popular attack in the Clash of Clans meta right now. And we'll see if he can get it done. And we're seeing another base where the town is in the core, but with walls around it. It's to mention that this could be very uh, nice to help prevent the Root Riders from kind of going into the town hall early or Valkyries activating it so that it ha you have to hit the percentage really before the town hall it gets activated and you have to start to turn around. So let's watch as the Root Riders are actually going to ignore it because of the overgrowth as he's just going to go with time as Ice Golems are coming out. I also have noticed that I personally have got a lot of one star in Legend League off of Town Halls with that exact arrangement right there. So it does make me nervous. It makes me really, really nervous looking at that, especially if he's been avoided for a long time because you got the king center right there. A lot of times we try to get the king to the core of the base so we can step in, pop his giant gauntlet, and then take the Town Hall down. But the Town Hall being surrounded by walls makes so that that may not be an opportunity for him. But attacking the wall with the giant gauntlet gets him through and he damaged the Town Hall through the wall because of the splash damage that that does, but looking pretty good here with the Eagle Artillery and Monastery standing a lot of heavy defense is still on the backside. Oh, that poison got tossed to the king and not the Royal Champion, which is going to be clutch for the RC to continue her way through the backside, but unfortunately taking a lot of damage from that multi-archer tower. She does go invisible perfectly so she can remove that Eagle Artillery. I gotta get past that model though. The Valkyries is happening. The Queen's right there with the Frozen Arrow, locks it down. King's still working, taking that multi archer tower to the left side of the base there with his Phoenix giving an extra target right there. He's gonna have to break the wall here, cost him a little bit of time, but yeah. it's it's a little slower than we have been seeing for the averages out of Navi. And so it is not gonna put that early pressure onto Navi, but it is gonna be a triple, and it is uh it's a moderate time there that they can work with later on. Yeah, one minute, 41 second coming in from Isma of VM Surgical. And Navi, they're going with a minute 15, a minute 20. If Navi themselves, they are getting a minute 30 attack, they're going to be talking amongst themselves like, yo, that was slow. That was slow. We, we got we to gotta speed uh -huh. that up, you know? And this being a minute 40, they're definitely going to be feeling comfortable. But remember, three stars are the most important here in this competition as we haven't yet seen the 15-15 war. We keep talking about it. And even in the world's warm-ups, we saw 15-15 very rarely. It was always just the one fail that came in that changed the whole outcome of the match. Well, P. Castro commonly plays the opener for Navi. He's extremely consistent in this position. And obviously we know that with four out of the five players currently hitting a 100% hit rate over the last 35 wars for, through this World Championship qualifier circuit, P. Castro will make his way in for this open attack here with the King deployed right into the defensive King over to the Eagle Artillery and the Headhunter. He's going to lose out on a lot of his HP very, very early in that fight. But he'll get the funnel form there, and I mean, I guess we'll see how long he can stick in there with headhunters picking away at him as well. He's taking a lot of heat over there, but he has set up the riders, and they will begin their progress into the core. I do notice a different clan castle that is being run by VM Surgical here of going ro Rocket Loons and Super Minions, which the Poison Spells do an absolute work, taking them down as he continues his way in towards this town hall. But we do have an invisibility spell next to the town hall. Is it going to get activated? And he freezes, Ooh, yep. but he gets activated. He's going to ignore the town hall, but with the Trineo Trap holding him up, he should be able to go right on back to it. That's good, that's good. And you were saying with the, diff the difference of the CC here, that is a big impactful thing there because when the when we see more and more of these attacks here, split the king and the queen separate from the root riders, you still have to have something to be able to go in if the root riders pull the CC to be able to fight it. It looks like he's got it under control here. This is very, very fast. But I am noticing a shift of people running the Poison Lizard on the Grand Warden to try to help fight off the Clan Castle when the Queen is separated like that, and we do run into CCs just like that. But it is going to be a lead on time out of the gate here in the favor of Navi. 
Yeah, Navi with a 1 minute 26 second triple there coming in from P. Castro. Got the average of minute 41 from VM Surgical. So Navi's in the lead at the moment, but plenty more attacks to come in as Klaus is going to look to help defend against Sammy for the second attack that's going to come in here for this match. And what is that, a 15 second lead here into Navi? So not anything crazy. It's not a yeah. crazy, crazy lead here. So they did hold him to a little bit slower than sometimes we've been seeing. Like some of the wars I've been watching with Navi, I think the best one I saw, they had a one minute and nine second average across the whole team, which is unbelievable here. But you know that uh, VM Surgical, they they know that they need to break out the best bases. Everybody knows that this is a lot of the line here with a golden ticket and a silver ticket and uh, $18,000 is a first place prize for this alone before you even get into the prize money that they get in advance for our going to the World Championship later on in the year if they get through. Like, there's a, this is the time to break out the best bases that you possibly can because you can't take any match for granted here. And if you're trying to stop Navi or any of the teams that they potentially could have faced off against, then you know your work's cut out for you and you got incredible attackers coming at you. So now the question is that Navi, uh, I, think, I would think that Navi would have done the same preparation because they have an entire base building team. It's not just the players. There's a lot of players that are working behind this scenes there where they actually uh, picked up the base builder that uh, helped class champs win the world championship last year and so they recruited uh satans they got uh, dima doing base building they got n doing base building they got a whole team working on the defensive side so there's so much more going on behind the scenes more than just the players that you see on the field but let's see if sammy can pick this base apart here as he gets ready for a room rider attack with some more overgrowth carbon yeah, with these Rue Riders that come straight in from the top side of the space. The Rue Riders, Valkyries, that Grand Award, and all down now. As the King is to the far left, he goes in a little bit, then cuts back to the outside. He's going to run around as he drops a couple of Super Barbs, thinking that he might run around. No, he does indeed go back with the Jump Spell, as the Warden can be able to pop the ability as the Queen's ability goes off. The Healers come from the Queen ability, transfer the Rue Riders, and healing them up. Get that extra heal to get him through the initial poison tower, but then try to use the overgrowth to lock out the other uh, spell tower on the back end of the base there. And oftentimes, when you see double poison towers, like poison or like the overgrowth one and take the other one with the healing tome is a good way to do it. But with the rage uh, potion on the other side, after that overgrowth wakes up, he's gonna have a lot of firepower coming at him as he goes back to the core. He's gonna skip it for now. Obviously, <laughs> this is a risky play here every single time I see it, and he needs somebody to stick back and take the town hall. The queen is right there in position with the frozen arrow, and she will tag it out. Yeah, that queen's perfectly able to help secure the town hall, also slowing it down from the frozen arrow. Headhunters, Valks, Wizards all around the outside. Pops the RC ability to continue to help move through a Tesla farm down to the bottom side, hasting your way through, and Sammy is indeed getting a three star taking down klaus's base and these base builders they know most likely it's not going to defend against a three star but they're really just putting in the smallest details to help try to slow the attack down as that sammy coming in with the triple a minute 38 we saw a minute 41 from the first attack now a minute 38 if navi keeps up with the under the minute 30s they're going to be in a great position and I remember that Navi had a 15 second lead after that first exchange. So surgical for them to be able to take the lead would have to go and uh, hold a defense up into like one minute 50 range there. But like you were saying at the very start of the war here, like go into the very beginning of the war here, get a couple of uh, fast attacks there with the bases that you think that are going to be most vulnerable with it, with the Riders and the Valkyries, and then Maybe you put some pressure on Navi. Maybe you can force an early mistake out of them as you try to just kind of pressure them into going fast. But then again, they're doing the same thing. They're also looking at your bases and they are finding the ones that are going to be most vulnerable to this attack here. And they're going to pick them up early here with their attackers that are able to go through and plan the fastest. But then again, you're always sitting on the sidelines with uh, with your closers over there with like stars playing closer. And he's been doing a lot of Lalo recently. And I feel like he could do some good work there. And with the more time to plan, he's gonna, they're going to save him for later on. We're seeing Gaku, the one player that has really only failed for any player in for Navi in the qualifiers here. And the question is, will he be able to triple as he continues to push these Ruraz and Velks into the core? The King does remove the Town Hall. 
does overgrowth the very back side of the space, but a lot of the Rune Riders seem to be disappearing in the core. They are pushing their way over to the Eagle with the Queen following into the defensive king. And a couple of extra Rune Riders deployed at the very bottom to get some extra tanking in front of the Wizards as the Pekkas die out. And we'll try to get the remaining defenses that are not in the overgrowth dealt with in the area. Looks like he's got it under control here. Over to the right side, the Queen and the Warden cleared up the right side. The Warden Champion cut across the core of the base there with the Hog Puppet. And now he's hitting on multiple freezes, but he can't freeze everything together here. There's a lot of heavy defenses. He freezes, but he's trying to split those freezes and to cover as many defenses as possible. And that's not really a possibility right now, but he does get through the defense in the bottom part of the queen can reach everything else the world champion pushing through and we'll get another triple here for navi and it looks like they will sustain their time advantage very very nice one there for gaku and if the weak link on your team if the lowest hit rate player who is by all means a lot of players with you could look at say you could look at gaku and say he's like the the weak link because he's the only person who doesn't have a 100 percent hit rate but Whoa. his stat line is actually would make him a star player on every other team Eric. Did you just say, Gaku, a weak link? Wait, whoa, uh, that is not possible. How technically, you technically. Said, hey, you said that, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, but hey, if Gaku comes in with a three star, does that mean that Navi has already gotten a perfect war because none of the rest of them have failed? You know, I mean, anything mm. can happen. The nerves can start to build as Eric, we are just a few matches away from not only obviously getting a gold ticket, but just getting to the grand finals guarantees a second place finish, with get, which also guarantees a silver ticket competing in the last chance qualifiers. So it's even more important, be in the upper bracket and get your way to the grand finals. Yeah, you just got to win this match and one more after it, and you are guaranteed at least a silver ticket. And that's uh, that's pretty insane there, but got to get through this one first. And Surgical is got it for that spot as well. And if they could beat Navi, that would be everybody would lose their mind here. But we are seeing, look at this, Carbon. We are finally seeing a little bit of something different. We're seeing Inferno Dragons for the first time I've seen this entire competition. Well, we did have the, the VM Surgical did bring it out in the very first war against the Chronic. Is it bringing it back as a blimp? Did secure the Town Hall, taking it down. Continuing to push these Inverno Dragons straight on through the core. Queen is followed behind the King to the top side. Inferno Dragons are charging up their beams, moving on through. And they need to continue to the left and still has not dropped that Royal Champion. As the Clan Castle has been removed, doesn't have to worry about any Ice Gloom or Lava Hound coming out to defend this base. So the Royal Champ could be placed to the bottom side to help finish it off as his heroes are running right off from the top as the King still has this giant gauntlet to use. Still play, he's playing a little slow there. Like he was, uh... He was after the first minute has elapsed before he deploys the Royal Champion, but she'll make her way forward here. Does have the skeleton that is uh, the skeletal spell disabling the single Inferno right there so she can push her way through it. The, dra the rest of the drag guard is in the war to finish off the scatter shot, and he's got his queen lagging behind there, stuck on walls, but she should be able to step in and get that storage out of the way. And I guess we'll see who gets into it first, but it is a triple. It's a triple. They get it done. They'll keep the pressure on a Navi, but they continue to play slower than Navi does. So now, do you think we see a shift from them slowing things down here? If they if they think they can catch up on time, then they could keep on going for the faster attacks there. But I have to wonder if they get too far behind in time, if they slow things down and start to go with something a little bit different. Well, if you do bring a different attack and you do get about a, two and a half minutes, that's going to give a lot of time back to VM Surgical. So just one slow attack can start to make this match even on stars, percentage, and time. But with that last attack, VM Surgical is sitting at four minutes and 59 seconds total on three attacks. While Navi, they have one more attack to do, but they're at two minutes 48. So there is quite a bit of a big gap here for, uh, for Navi right now. As long as Kazuma's going to triple, he's looking and he's got the plan to do it. He's got the root rise, he's got the Valks and an overgrowth. But notice how Ishma's base here, the tunnel is in the core, but there is not walls surrounding it. Got it find a good spot for this overgrowth here. A lot of times I see it being used on the Eagle Artillery or the Town Hall, or sometimes both of them, but I'm not seeing a lot of defenses around the Town Hall. Like that Town Hall era, like this is kind of an interesting base here where the Town Hall 
doesn't have any defenses in that compartment. And so the Riders have no reason to go in there. And that means no reason to open the walls to go into the core compartment. So that town hall could be tricky here, Carbon. He could just try to overgrowth and ignore it for a while and then maybe just lap around. I'm not even sure how you approach this. It's kind of weird. It feels like a, it feels like an anti two star island base, but then it's like an artificial island. It's kind of just a weird design. Hang on here, that king did not really get the value he was hoping for. The jump connected him to the wrong compartment. So that scatter shot and the ricochet cannon stayed up. That was supposed to go down to the king. This could be a big problem in terms of even getting a three star here as the super minions coming out of the siege barracks. He did over both the town hall and the core. Is he gonna look to end on the town hall, taking all that risk? Does have the queen ability, one freeze left. Let's see if Kazuma could continue to power through. Super minions in a good position to wake up that town hall right now. The overgrowth is, or the overgrowth wears off, and the monolith is swarmed, so he's not going to have any problem with that. Everybody's regrouping across the top of the base, stepping away through. All hero abilities are used. All the spells have been used, but everybody steps back into it. It's the last building to drop, and it's another three star for Navi. Kazuma gets it done, and he's keeping the pace up here for Navi. Another one locked into that one minute and twenty, roughly area. Area, and it's a minute and 21 here for Kazuma. And they're really, really ahead on time here. They just continue they to extend their lead on that. At this point, VM Surgical, go for three stars. You know you're not going to be able to make the difference on time at this point. You're just crossing your fingers and hoping that... <laughs> well, I love. stars carbon, or clouds? Carbon, carbon. Yes. If you... Is it easier to get a full-on defense or just force them into an attack that almost goes to a time fail? Because, like, do you keep your... Like, if you have that situation where you have an attack count all the way down, but it still goes through for a three-star, like, you... Got, I feel like you almost still have to play it pretty faster and keep it under two minutes even in this situation. Do you agree? Well, it's it's a... Right now, total time with all the attacks added up together is a 50-second differential, whereas Navi's at four minutes, nine seconds, VM Surgical's at four minutes, is 59 seconds so you mean you never know but granted this is a root rider valkyrie attack that we're seeing from simon which can be quick it's usually under two minutes here as the queen's making her way down south but we got a super dragon coming out of the defensive clan castle as he looks to continue to push these root riders straight into the core he's in the healer puppet with the queen so she can pop her ability very very early into the attack there i i think she had a giant arrow as well i thought i saw a giant arrow uh, I didn't see what it hit though, uh, but the overgrowth will lock out the core of the base. There. He got a couple of the defenses. He didn't cover the entire core with the overgrowth. He could have. He could have just blanketed all the way up across the entirety of that middle of the base, but he left a couple of buildings in it. Specifically, he left the clan castle and he left up a couple of defenses that he could just pick up and have the area thinned out and lower damage output as he made his way through so we could take those without being under as much heat. So I like that approach there. Not overgrowthing to take everything, but overgrowing enough to be able to get through and it does work right there and it was a fast one. So Simon will put the pressure back over to Navi and what was the attack time in that one there? Um, ooh, wow. Okay. Minute 14, Impressive. fastest one of, was this the fastest one in the whole match total? It seems it that might was have been. A, it might have just been, but I mean, Eric, we've got Stars and Klaus still to attack here for Navi, and they are not looking to fail. They are perfect. Every single player on Navi is 100% perfect, except for Gaku, has failed not many times, but I, it's not, I'm not... I'm not trying oh. to jinx anything, but I'm just stating some facts of the stats what Navi have here. <laughs> I think I think Gaku had two misses over the course of 35 wars. So they still put him at a 94% hit rate, which is insane. However, we talked about it at the start of the war. We talked about how Stars is one of the players who will split off from the Root Rider meta, and he will do the Zap Lalo. He's one of the best Zap Lalo attackers in the world. And now we'll see if he can clutch a lead for his team and keep his team on top here as they go into finishing this fourth exchange here. And we'll see what kind of value you can get out of the heroes. Does remove an Eagle Artillery and a Ricochet Cannon on the backside, including an Inferno Tower, as we're going to see the Blimp with the Balloons come down south to help pop that one ability to allow this Blimp to fly all the way to the Town Hall. But let's see if it finds a Tornado Trap and... 
the safe. No, it is making it all the way to the town hall as it's sneaky goblins and a lava hound that does come out of here. Yeah, what you were talking about earlier, how we are seeing a lot of these town halls that are completely surrounded by walls like that. And if the town hall is completely surrounded by walls, then you don't have any potential for traps if you can get the blimp into that compartment. And so you can just drop in sneak goblins completely safe there and use all the extra space instead of this extra spacer to protect the sneak goblins. You can use it as extra to be able to throw in a lava hound to get extra tanking into the back end of the base. So I really like that. It is. Still moving pretty decently fast. They're getting a couple of blues still alive. Lots of cleanup at the right side, but the heroes are stuck on walls. They're trying to break through the world champion pops their ability and will surge across. And looks like he's got a lockdown here, Carbon. He does indeed with the minions around to the right side, cleaning up the gold and elixir storage is over there now. He does approach a minute and a half and slowing down. You never know. Here's the world champ jumps over the wall, helps to take this. And it is a three star. Is it all tied up here? It's going to be 12 to 12. Navi and VM Surgical with the final attackers, which is going to be Ultra coming in next for VM Surgical. And then Klaus, the final attacker for Navi, as it is a minute 36 here for stars. And the pressure now is on these final two hitters. Carbon, I just ran the numbers. And at the moment, the exact time split between the teams is 28 seconds in the favor of Navi. So if a surgical can just do 20 seconds faster than they, if they get one small mistake, one small oversight there from the last attack as Klaus gets ready to go in, they could reasonably swing this war on time and set it to a double perfect war in their favor. So that, that last exchange there actually shifted the war towards them pretty significantly. And so now there's a lot of pressure for the last two attackers, knowing that they are that close and they have oh. the chance. It's within sight and now Ultra's Wait. in with another room rider attack. He just sent a super wall breaker and the Grand Warden altar sniped it instantly. So these P.E.K.K.A.s were not able to make its way into that Grand Warden compartment and the Eagle there. So that can affect the funneling and send some troops off to the left side as he tries to push into the quarters of the town hall. Yeah, I see that, but not only that, but then the P.E.K.K.A.s then walked along the north side of the base and they ended up getting picked off by the defensive queen. He did slip in some uh, some headhunters under his uh, eternal tome, and they were able to cross through and get that defensive queen down, which clears the way for the Royal Champion to go reinforce in that area. He recognizes the problems, and he is actively reinforcing that area. But down south, his queen got wrecked by the oh, single no. photo of the ricochet cannon, and our healers are going down there as well as they are not able to find a transfer. Over to Circle North, this is this is not going so hot here, uh -oh. Carpen. This is looking really, really good for Navi. As the Rue Riders are all going around this core, the Royal Champion does come back to go to the middle. He's gonna have to use some spells. He rages up the Royal Champ. He needs this RC to eventually get to the Town Hall because the Rue Riders and King have not gone into the middle. Okay, Royal Champion's in there. She's got the lock out of the Town Hall now, but getting targeted by the Monarch. Needs to go invisible from the Hog Puppet there. She gets one second of invisibility. She gets it down. She'll step her way, but she gets stuck in the Tornado Trap, so she cannot finish clearing the core. I don't think he's got the punch here, Carbon. This looks like a straight up miss, and the percentage is looking very, very low, leaving the bar set for Navi in a very, very... Rough spot here for Surgical. I, I think this might have just lost at the war on the final exchange. They had it within grass and they buckle under the pressure. All Klaus will need to do is get above the percentage of this attack here, which is looking like to be an 85. He's trying to get a little bit more. We'll come back to life with that Phoenix, but the Phoenix probably won't be able to go for much more after it pulls a trap, even though it won't take any damage right there initially. But unfortunately, Ultra gonna be falling short here, getting in about an 86%. So, Klaus, if you get above that, you win and you will advance to the next round here in the upper brackets. With the pressure is on, all you gotta do is get an 87% two-star. You'll be looking good, Klaus. Yeah, and that's that's where that that pressure starts to ramp and ramp and ramp there for an underdog team, and you just have one small mistake there. And I have to wonder, because he had so many troops uh, split off to the far left side there, if the siege barracks didn't end up having the defensive grand warden snipe off that one headhunter, the or the, excuse me, the uh, 
the defensive Grand Ward has sniped off the wall breaker at the very beginning of the tag and messed up his left side funnel. And that had massive cascading consequences that may or may not have pushed more troops to get out in front of the queen if the queen survived. I don't know. I, I feel like that one wall breaker caused the majority of his issues there. Yeah, that's one small detail. It's all it takes in an attack as we're seeing now Klaus coming in with the Root Riders and Valks as well. You get a three star, you win. But all you really need is an 87% two star for a guaranteed victory to advance as we're seeing a skeleton spell out in front of the P.E.K.K.A.s. And I'm taking a look here with the Queen down to the bottom side. And we've got the Root Riders, Warden, Apprentice Warden, to move on through right on in from the opposite side of this town hall to kind of cut across as a queen continue to walk her way and even wall break in and get that use the queen ability to try to secure the town hall eventually. Yeah, it's a good spot for her to be, and he's got extra wall breakers on standby. He can definitely support over there with some super barbarians, but he needs to keep her safe. And he's got the whole area unlocked down there with the eternal tome, giving everybody protection as they work just inside of the base next to her. But the main force there going forward, they're stuck in ice golems. The monolith chips away, and he's still got a poison tower on the back side of the base here that's about to throw, and it does, and it's hitting a lot of troops right now, Carbon. You can definitely slow things up here and kill a lot of these Rubiders and a lot of these extra smaller troops that are hanging on behind the Rubiders as they are not able to get tanking through that. Yeah, but he's got a freeze and that king ability still to utilize and gonna look to crush through the backside of this base. All his hero abilities other than the Grand Warden finally now popping that king ability, taking this down. Queen ability as well as it is a three star for Klaus and Navi will be advancing here in the monthly finals they're not going to the grand finals there's still more matches to go but navi takes on their first match they did have a first round buy into the bracket but navi gets a perfect war 15 to 14 with klaus getting a one minute 32 second attack